Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have this wish I wish tonight. Welcome to Voyagers National Park, established in 1975. It's located in northern Minnesota, on the Canadian border, near the town of International Falls. The name is a head nod to the French-Canadian fur traders who often traveled the area as the first European settlers there. Voyagers National Park is a 218,000 acre maze of lakes, dense forest, and 500 islands and it was recently honored as one of the best places in the world to stargaze. The International Dark Sky Association has designated Voyagers as an international dark sky park, joining just over 80 other places in the world with this distinction. The IDA recognizes efforts to preserve dark skies and prevent light pollution. Look up and be wowed. Have you ever been to a place that is truly so dark that the sky glows? Here, the Milky Way is denser. The planets shine bright. You may even get to witness the northern lights. Some popular stargazing locations in the park are the Voyager's Forest Overlook, Beaver Pond Overlook, and the Kettle Falls Dam. To take advantage of this incredible night sky, your group can rent a houseboat. It's a floating cabin and offers more comfortable accommodations than a tent and sleeping bag. Imagine exploring the areas by day and floating under the stars, maybe even in a hot tub at night. What a unique vacation. So what can you do there during the day? Here are a few ideas. Since the majority of the park is accessible by water, this park is a favorite for canoe and kayak enthusiasts. In the winter, it's a phenomenal place to snowmobile or snowshoe. Voyagers is located on the southern edge of the Canadian Shield, a gigantic dome of volcanic bedrock dating back billions of years. The granite cliffs of Grassy Bay rise 125 feet above Sandpoint Lake, which is 8 miles long with 92 miles of shoreline. In the summer, you can see the cliffs by boat, in the winter, by snowmobile. Rainy Lake is 60 miles long and has 929 miles of shoreline. It's a great place to boat, paddle, fish, and camp. In Anderson Bay, you can see the 80 feet white granite cliffs, along with stunning views of the bay and Rainy Lake. It's one of the most popular photographed places in the park and offers picnic tables and a fire ring. There is a 1.75 mile loop trail to see the bluffs from the top. This is also the northern trailhead of the one-way 9.5 mile hike on the Cruiser Lake Trail system. Back in the late 1800s to early 1900s, the logging industry thrived in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. In the park, Hoist Bay is a registered historic site for its logging history. After the logs were felled here, 
they used Hoist Bay to float them out of the lake to where they could be loaded onto trains. You can visit historic cabins, an ice house, root cellar, and a boathouse. You can also see the piling for the trestles and railway. There is a lovely place for a picnic that's next to the water. Fishing was another early industry in this area. Large fishing operations began on the Rainy River in 1892. Over the next decade, there were many fishing companies based right here. Caviar collection from Lake Sturgeon provided a major boom to the industry. Lack of refrigeration eventually ended this commercial production. Family fishing then took over. Old fishing camps still dot the park today. The most preserved one is Ovison Fish Camp. Harry Ovison settled here in 1959. A good day's catch would bring him 300 pounds of whitefish and 50 pounds of walleye. Today, you can eat a picnic by the water and explore the remains of his camp. The only lodging within the park is Kettle Falls Hotel. It's only accessible by water and has been around since 1913. It was sold a few years after it was founded for $1,000 and four barrels of whiskey. The National Park Service renovated the place in 1987. You can now spend the night or enjoy a meal and respite on the front porch. Interestingly, it's one of the few places in the U.S. where you can look south into Canada. The Ellsworth Rock Gardens are perhaps the most favorite destination in the park. Jack Ellsworth spent 20 years creating this masterpiece, using the Minnesota landscape as his canvas. Combining art and engineering, the Chicago carpenter built 62 terraced flower beds that he filled with more than 13,000 lilies. He skillfully placed 200 abstract rock sculptures to accent the garden. Its nickname is the showplace of Lake Cabotagma. So pack your bags and head up north to Voyagers National Park. Get lost in the sparkling waters and deep woods and perhaps find yourself again under a starry sky that will take your breath away. Thanks for watching Shore Me Some More. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next video about the shores, outdoors, and more.